Hi, this is Leland Snyder for Frack Times. If you look up Marcellus Shale, you'll see that the Tioga bentonite bed is either in or just under the Marcellus Shale. Also, Shale, through other cited references, has very commonly microcrystalline pyrite in it, right between the shale bed and what typically might be following the sandstone above it. This ties in to Yuri Gorby, PhD geomicrobiologist testimony here. So let's uh, hear what he has to say. You know, in, in these deep shale formations that, that are formed basically as, uh, as uh, ocean deposits, uh, you have salt water that's high in sulfate, other anions, including uh, uranyl carbonates, I mean those are in those systems and and so those are naturally entrained in, the, in those systems when you when they're buried and then that was I think for the Marcellus Shale it's, it's uh, about 350 million years old and the those sulfur metabolizing organisms are also entrained in that system and they persist. I mean, we you know, microbiologists have now started to investigate like the extent of life down into these deep uh, systems and life, microbial life, extends much deeper than even these, uh, these formations that we see. What, the, what is happening when, when we drill down into these formations is that the accumulated over time, the accumulated gases like hydrogen sulfide which is a toxic and corrosive gases uh, will first come up out of that hole in the in the first you know during the first phase of after fracturing and when you're basically flaring off that this uh, the gas so there's literally uh, hydrogen sulfide itself already it's not being released from mineral minerals it's just down there that's correct that's okay. already down there and and uh, yeah you we hear a lot about biocides that uh, will knock back the growth of bacteria or, or being used sometimes they say as a sterilizing agent you don't really sterilize these formations but you can by adding biocides and, and those can include formaldehyde, glutaraldehyde, those are the organic ones quick pill for, uh, form, uh, formulas that I don't actually know what are contained in there but for, for the organic biocides glutaraldehyde and formaldehyde are listed in many of the uh, recipes or the the, the fluids that are used uh, for fracking and there was the 2011 uh, uh, congressional committee that was put together and I think chaired by uh, Henry Waxman that you know they have a list of the 750 different chemicals that are used in I think they studied 20 or more uh, companies so these are a list of those chemicals and in almost all of them you would see either formaldehyde, glutaraldehyde, and then you can have other biocides, and these are the, the metal, metal biocides that, that we've been talking about. With the organic ones, I mean, these things don't, they, they, they last for some period of time, and again, they're, they're meant to knock back the activity of microorganisms, and especially the sulfate-reducing bacteria that, through their natural metabolism, generate corrosive toxic hydrogen sulfide in those systems. So again, that's one of the souring agents in, uh, uh, in, in sour gas streams, so it's very important to get that material, you know, avoid the production of hydrogen sulfide during production phase of these wells. As a subsurface microbiologist and someone that has been working in anaerobic systems for you know, almost more than 20 years now, I'm really concerned that after those biocides degrade, and they naturally degrade, that the natural activity of those sulfate reducing bacteria that are still in that formation, they can, they will grow back. I mean, it's very difficult to sterilize. It's impossible to sterilize a formation. So they will grow back, and because this, this whole system now is fractured and hydrated, and you've stirred all this stuff, it's basically like just activating a, a, a big batch of bacteria. You know, like giving it a, a rouse, say a germ. That these organisms, their activity is increased thousands of times their normal activity in that formation, and so they will generate tremendous amounts of hydrogen sulfide. The real concern is, is that as that hydrogen sulfide is generated and percolates or moves up in that in the in the, uh, the well itself, that failing casings that are you know upper in the upper reaches will 
be dissolved and will bite these, this corrosive gas. And when hydrogen sulfide enters aerobic aquifers, I mean, again, the natural activity of microorganisms will generate things like sulfuric acid. And this leads to the generation of what we know around here as acid mine drainage, or at least down in West Virginia and central Pennsylvania. But acid mine drainage of 100,000 wells, if, we, if we're thinking about the, the magnitude of this problem here, in 93,000 square miles of Marcella Shale, with 100 plus thousand deep wells, with stove pipes from these deep formations, and with a, a failure rate of 50% in, in 30 years, I think is what the industry claims, we can get almost guarantee not even with doing any science, that we're going to contaminate massive groundwater aquifers. Now, it would be good to be able to, to conduct the science, to actually evaluate the generation rate of hydrogen sulfide in these systems, to evaluate the impact of that hydrogen sulfide as it enters these aquifers. That's a long-term study. I mean, that we're talking, you know, a decade or two of investigation to see what the, the impact will be. But remember, this area, this land, is not for just us. It's for our children and our grandchildren. And we're going to leave them with a toxic mess that they won't be able to clean up. So what Yuri Gorby says there does tie in with other references I'll, I'll cite here. But in addition to that, if you tie it in with previous testimony about what happened to the U.S. Department of Energy's funding, it sounds like this is a serious issue, and chances are there's no research going on about this. So, as in closing, what really counts is what's your opinion. Take care.